Trees is the title of the exhibition on these walls behind me, running August 2nd through 26th, 2012. And Beth Moon was the juror for this exhibition, whose own images of trees astound. Astounding is one word for the collection on these walls, viewed here by gallery visitors on reception night, August 17th. It's easy to gloss over the finer points of images when they share the same subject matter, but keep in mind you'll see photographers and specimens representing the Appalachians to Armenia. It's a diverse group, to say the least. When you're among this many trees, you'll best appreciate by taking slow, patient time, as there's something to learn from each photograph. Let's take a look. Beginning with an honorable mention, The Olive Grove by Heather Jacks from Germantown, Maryland. I'm showing it to you first because I find it particularly representative of the stillness and contemplative majesty pervasive in this exhibition. It also features a single tree as its focus, which you'll find is the foundation of others' approach as well. You're experiencing these now. It's hard to resist preserving the sight of a lone tree. They're so grand in their isolation. And here's another honorable mention, Loss, by Penny Adams from Charlotte, North Carolina. There are a handful of images representing a typical close-up view for us people. We stand at that humbling point just over its massive root system and tangled beneath our feet and then very much under their trunks and branches and foliage which soar above us much closer to the clouds than we. It seems like an ordinary viewpoint and yet we so rarely look up walking down our sidewalks or within our forests. And then step a little closer and look more closely at the details there's so much to see if you open your eyes to the extraordinary all around you. And even closer and a truncated view can become suggestively vast with possibility. Our individual interpretations become personal when we let go of the document and allow the abstract. It is noteworthy how often we pair trees with water. Of course, the pairing occurs naturally in our landscapes repeatedly, but there is something particularly magical about joining their forces, or in many cases seeing one entirely through the qualities of another. And add shadow to the mix, and you're left with planes of positive and negative that push forward and fall backward, swapping the dominant role ceaselessly. There is such grace and possibility in the mirrored view of natural beauty, where our reality is reflected back to us as though from another dimension. Unlike Narcissus, this beauty hath no ego. And here is Beth Moon's juror's choice, Snow in Porik, by Carmen Orlik of Croatia. Orlik's interpretation, as some of these that follow, becomes a narrative scene through which each of us has an inclination to build upon or complete the story from our own associations and assumptions and conclusions. And the narratives become cinematic, dramatic, through filtered light with patches of shade and darkness, and then we subtract the contrast of light and dark and you're left with pure ethereality. Sometimes this happens by way of monotone color and the blurring of fine textures into two-dimensional washes of foreground through background. The ethereal paired with subject-based edge framing make these scenes idyllic vignettes of nostalgia.
Then come a host of additional graphic devices that make the following images compositionally distinctive. From theories of continuance and closure to principles of repetition, pattern, hierarchy, balance, and unity, among others, the images are decoratively dynamite. Seductive graphic studies, to say the least. Repetition is an obvious occurrence in forest. It's striking a foreground and middle ground and background riddled with trunks. Each of us has a different reaction to these persistent vertical lines. I feel sort of like a pinball surrounded by these unmoving posts which change my course repeatedly from point A to point B. Strength in numbers these armies of innocence. If only they were as impervious as their growth appears. We are surrounded by such vulnerable beauty. Vulnerable to us as photographers, we try to capture our reverence before we steal or it is stolen by destruction. These are the small handful of examples of the whole view, true landscape in its vastness of foliage. It is interesting to me that these are the majority of the color images in the show, a show dominated by black and white and sepia tones. Then come the narrative moments, describing our relationships to trees. The proportion of human-touched specimens in this jury group are few and far between. Few photographers have marked their own or others' presence among the trees, and we can only speculate as to why. But in the least, as a viewer, we feel the effects of these crossed fertilized subject images to be contrary to the purity of the others, the previous. And whether the result is good or bad is solely personal. Each of us has assimilated our own experiences with trees to the learned from the plethora of icons present in almost all points of our Earth's history. How have the marks we've made affected our views? In this honorable mention titled Connected by Tom Reese of Seattle, it's been made clearer. There is both harmony and discord in the marriage of nature to man. How do we pay homage? How can we defend? In the end, we are left with an undeniable web of life, so complex and modest and ingenious and volatile all around us. It is through our photographic observations of these labyrinths of time and history and consequence of future that we may remind ourselves of one of our greatest gifts. We live among trees. Signing off once more, my name is Polly Ray and I'm here at the Darkroom Gallery in Essex Junction, Vermont. Thank you to Ken Signorello, the gallery owner, and Susan Robinson for all of their very hard work in putting this show together. Thank you especially to Beth Moon for doing such a fantastic job as juror. We really enjoyed this show. It is, as is the subject matter of course, really lovely. I'll see you next time and thanks again. Bye-bye.